Hey y'all, welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Ford. This episode is going to be all about sports here in Fort Worth. And we're here at the Game On Sports Arena that's on the west side of Fort Worth. Trevor Armstrong, general manager and owner will be with us, as well as Jason Sands with the Fort Worth Sports Commission and Jasmine Henderson. Y'all, you have to see this interview. It was a wonderful speaking with her. She is a former professional soccer player. Now she's a motivational speaker. She also is a soccer coach and she is wonderful. So stick around, watch the rest of us and let's go. Welcome. As we kick off this whole episode about sports, I'm excited to be here at Game On Sports Complex with Trevor Armstrong, who's the owner, general manager of Game On Sports Complex and Game On Sports Arena. Welcome, Trevor. Thank you. Yeah, Good thanks. To be here. Glad to have you here. This is an exciting venue. Um, as I told you, I hadn't been here yet. I've been around it and, and so excited to be inside of it here. But tell everybody a little bit about the complex, what you're doing here, and how it all got started. Sure. Well, the sports complex is actually our second facility. It's our newest, and it opened in October of 2016. And we started Game On Arena Sports, which is about a mile north of here. Uh, it was an indoor soccer arena and flag football facility. And we started with that. That opened in 2006. Okay. And we began operating it in 2012. So um, we do a lot at both places. Um, our footprint's clearly grown, and our mission really is to bring um, fantastic facilities to Fort Worth um, and give every kid the opportunity to excel to their best potential. And learn skills along, along the way. Sure. Yeah. yeah, we our team works incredibly hard, and our coaching staff has grown immensely over the years. And um, we used to primarily just do leagues, and, and um, we've really expanded into teaching we start with kids as young as two years old in soccer wow okay uh, it's a great sport to start to that's learn. just a mass of kids kicking a ball around at that point it right? is i remember my start... girls doing that at one point yeah. they're like who's doing what <laughs> it's fun my kids have done it as well and, yeah. and but they're learning how to move their bodies and it's a great sport to start to start to put those things together it's a good foundational sport like we like to call it um but yeah we do we do classes for here, basketball, volleyball, there's pickleball lessons. Uh, at the other facility, we've got flag football classes and soccer classes, obviously. Right. Um, for adults as well, by okay. the way. Okay, so, all ages, you can. All ages. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. You, you hit on the subject of, of sorts of why athletics is important, why this interaction that kids have with sports, the skills they develop. Elaborate on that a little bit for our audience. What do kids think, learn when, they, when yeah. they go through the program? Well, I think, I think you learn a lot. I think we all, as adults, look back. Um, well, I can speak for myself. Sure, look back yeah, and, yeah. and think of the lessons. Um, a lot of those things, you know, how to lose, how to win, mm -hmm. how to work hard when, you know, if you want to be better. Yeah. Not play, everybody gets to, a ribbon in life, right? Like, effort, everybody right. gets a gold trophy. You, there are winners and losers and, and that, those sort of lessons. Yes. And... Well, you know, even listening to coaches and, and, and learning all those things, and um, it's, it's, it's endless. So, um, yeah, and on the health and wellness side, too, mm -hmm. it's getting the kids away from the screens for a bit. And, it's always important. Um, always important. So we want to provide every opportunity for those kids to get out here. I think participation is the, the number one thing here. So Just getting out and participating and learning those skills, learning yep. to act as a team, maybe in, in a team sport Absolutely. with others. Yeah, great point. The, the teamwork aspect. and Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lots, lots of values. We love this, the space that we're in, and um, we're very passionate. Our team is, like I said before, uh, super passionate about growing um, participation and, and finding new ways to keep it fun. Mm -hmm. um, we do that through camps and classes and um, running great competitive leagues. And, and um, yeah, we've got every level, even in our leagues, we've got, I'll give you one example, in yeah. our, in our co-ed soccer leagues, we have seven divisions okay so um co-ed over 30. okay so for what sports what sports? This, sorry this is for soccer soccer okay yeah. co-ed over 30. um so really every level yeah. there from folks that played maybe in college um to folks that maybe have never played and are right. interested in learning the game so but i see you've got we're sitting right here on the basketball courts um i saw the uh the uh, beach volleyball courts you have outside you talked about pickleball what other kind of sports are, are do you have leagues for here or camps. I mean, let's talk about that too. Camps that you have. Sure. We run with our partners. So we have a number of, it's not 
just came on. We are big believers in bringing the whole community together. And, and so we've got um, basketball select basketball clubs. We got select or club volleyball clubs. Um, they're all partners of ours. And so they run, they all run their camps in addition to the game on staff running our camps. Okay. So all told, we've got about 40 camps in the summer wow. that we run. Wow. Um, so our our summer calendar soccer basketball are you doing pickleball camps now too since that's so popular we haven't done pickleball camps. okay okay we do pickleball tournaments pickleball tournaments okay yeah. okay and we do pick up a lot of folks bring their bring their friends out and, yeah. and play up here regularly so. yeah you even mentioned with the pickleball you have the police officers uh the we fun do. that's that's going to be here soon uh, with their tournament as part yes of it. correct great yes. i appreciate you supporting yes. them and supporting that as part of it absolutely one of the questions i like to ask and this is um this is a small business. I mean, it, 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 you might be the one, but, and I created the small business task force uh, as part of the city. Look at permitting and look at all the things that we do that make it harder for small business to open. What advice would you give someone that, that's starting a business? And I know this is a business been going for a long period of time, but I know you probably still have hiccups and other things. Is what, Just in general, um, what, what are challenges that maybe you've overcome as a small business? And how yeah. would you address them? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think our industry is very unique. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're not a restaurant or right. anything like that. Um, so for us, really, we were able to, in the beginning, start very small. We moonlighted, just okay. being honest. Right, uh, right. When we were starting. And um, so you had another job, but you're trying to set this up at the same time. Is that what you're about? Correct. We started or? with the indoor soccer yeah. arena, both my business partner and yeah. I. Um, both moonlighted and, and worked nights and weekends yeah. and did all did all that to get bootstrapped it, going, so. it to make it work yep. Is that, yep. yeah and you hear it a lot but truly that first two three years mm-hmm. it's batting down the hatches and um prepared to survive through those yeah. first three years and, and if you can do that you learn all those invaluable lessons along that way yeah and um it makes you better and stronger and and um sets you up for the future so. having an idea and believing in it and knowing it can succeed yes. is part of it right Yep, no, that's, that's, part a, that's of it. a big part of it. And, and we've, we've been very fortunate to have great partners. Um, I do want to, I mean, Cook Children's, mm-hmm. she, they're, they are a partner of our multi-sport camp and, okay. and our, our Go Tikes program, which is our two-year-olds, as I mentioned before, yeah, yeah, yeah. our okay. four-year-olds. So um, having great partners um, for those things, as well as um, not being afraid to be inclusive with other folks that might you might be able to collaborate with. I think that's that's been vital to our success too. So, well, oh, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you for uh, what you're doing. Where can people find you if they want to find you? You mentioned a couple of places, but where what are, where, where can they find you? On um, online. Yeah. And yeah. we are. At What's Ga- that website? It's gameonfw.com. Okay. As okay. In Fort Worth. Okay. Great. And then our our beach program, you'll appreciate this, is 817 Beach. Okay. And so they can check out all of our our beach volleyball programs there too. So Great. Well, thanks for what you're doing. I know you're doing a lot of different things. You serve on the Camp Bowie District Board. You've done a lot of different things helping this part of Fort Worth continue to to thrive and and, and grow. So appreciate that. Thank you for what you do. We're very passionate about Fort Worth and excited to be here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for being here. All right. Thank you. And now as we continue this episode all about sports in Fort Worth, I think it's great that I have Jason Sands, who's Vice President of Visit Fort Worth and Executive Director of the Fort Worth Sports Commission. Welcome, Jason. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. I, uh, we've been friends for a long time. Yes. I love what you're doing of raising the level of sports, just the awareness of what's happening here in Fort Worth. So tell us a little bit about your, your roles with the, the two roles that you have and how they work together. Yes, yeah, so I'm with Visit Fort Worth, so I head up the sports team for Visit Fort Worth, and, and over the course of the last couple of years when I started, you know, we understood that we're competing against all these cities that have a 10, 20, 30 year head start on us when it comes to creating the infrastructure needed to support these sporting events and to, to make them successful. So uh, we're, we're looking at cities like Indianapolis and Louisville and Kansas City and Houston. They're all, you know, way down the road when it comes to sports tourism. So one of the things that we decided to do was create the Fort Worth Sports Commission, okay. which is a 501c3 that's a subsidiary of Visit Fort Worth. We've created a board of directors around that group. So that way we can have community and corporate leaders involved with everything that we're doing to help elevate the city through the power of sports. We're, we're working with our community partners to, to showcase all the things that make Fort Worth great, to bring in these great sporting events and to really make an impact in Fort Worth. Yeah, well, let's talk about that impact. And one of the impacts 
uh, you already see is this World Cup 2026 and how that's coming to the region and how we're going to support that. How, what are the other impacts of the community that you see it's making? Well, when it comes to sporting events, it's, it's not just as simple as booking it and then sure. saying good luck, you know. It's, it's uh, what we say with the Sport Commission is our mission is to enhance the image, economy, and quality of life of the community. So we're going out there and actively trying to secure these events to bring them here. Uh, we're going out there and talking about our great venues that we have, the support system that's in place, the airport that we've got that's one of the best in the world, mm -hmm. uh, just all the different folks that we have that live here, the residents, because they buy tickets and so on. Once we get these events, that's when the real work begins because they need that support to be successful because we can, we can get volunteers, we can roll out the red carpet, we can get great hotels for them. But if when the competition starts and there's nobody in the stands, right. then it seems like the city doesn't support them. So we've got to go all the way in with these folks. We've got to create marketing plans, help them sell tickets, get volunteers, create a hospitable environment. So welcome signs, let them know that we're excited to have them here. And, and then uh, work with them every step of the way to make sure their event's successful. And if they are successful and there's people in the stands and the athletes have a good experience and all the fans have a great time in Fort Worth, the stockyards or downtown, they're gonna wanna come back. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to have a great first impression, so they're gonna wanna come, come back, back to and, Fort Worth. And visit and do other things here Absolutely. in Fort Worth. Uh, a little bit, uh, do you know what, what, would, what is the economic impact that we have right now with sports, uh, sports tourism in Fort Worth? So when we talk about the image economy and quality of life, yeah. so I'll start with the image piece. You know, when we're hosting these high profile events here, they a lot of the times are on television. So yeah. in the last couple of years, we've had events that are on Fox, ABC, CBS, NBC, like the network, along right. with ESPN and all the other sports stations. So when you're at home in California or yeah. New York, you've never heard of Fort Worth before, and you tune into the first and second rounds of the NCAA, and you see live from Fort Worth this amazing competition, and you see images of Dickey's Arena mm -hmm. and the stockyards in our downtown, and then the next weekend you see the Bassmaster Classic on mm -hmm. Fox, and it's the same Dickey's Arena, and you start to say, what is Fort Worth? Like, what is, uh, you never yeah. heard of it. So that's one of the things that we've dealt with with Fort Worth is yeah. people haven't known. So we're right. trying to get that word out. The, so the, the, that number is a little intangible. Yeah, right? the you exposure don't know. is really yeah, priceless. Yes, yes, I mean, yeah, and, yeah. and we get social media and so on, but just the exposure we're bringing nationally, internationally by bringing these high profile, profile events is, is huge. Yeah. The economic side, you know, this last year we hosted about, a, the folks that we brought in were bringing hundreds of thousands of visitors to the market. They're spending about $105 million, we estimated, the last year in direct spending wow. in our hotels and our restaurants, supporting our community. And that's great because we have these outside dollars that are coming into our community and, and being invested. So that's that's huge for us. And then we're yeah, also- Shopping, hotel occupancy tax, all these other things, yeah, supporting Spending businesses. money in the stockyards, because obviously yeah. the stockyards has grown a lot right. over the course of the last few years, coming out of COVID, really. Right. You know, we've got some great momentum coming out of COVID. We were one of the few cities and states that were open for business, and we really capitalized on that opportunity yeah. in Fort Worth with Dickey's Arena being brand new. Yep. And we were able to, to bring some high profile sporting events to the community, build some good relationships, show them what our city does to support these events and, and help them be successful. And they're all coming back and we're, we're riding that wave as much as we can. Fantastic, fantastic. So you and I tangentially have been working on a youth sports complex, me from the council perspective and yes. you from the sports commission and, and, and really gathering the data on what that would look like. Let's talk a little bit about that that thought process there and, and what we hope to see in a youth sports complex here in Fort Worth. Yes, it was almost, you know, I started about six years ago and right over the first couple of months we, we worked with the city to bring in a consultant just to analyze the facilities we have to offer. And one of the things they came back with is said that, you know, you need outdoor youth complexes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we they recommended a 20 field soccer complex that you could do flag football and lacrosse and other long field activities. So we've been working with the city ever since to try to find, you know, there's a worldwide pandemic in between there. <laughs> yes. We're trying to kind of go down <laughs> that this road. That kind of shut there's down been, a lot of activities. There's been a lot of, you know, sidetracks, but, you know, we're on this path. And, and for us, what's important is people need to understand the power of sports and the impact it can have on our kids. You know, we've got an obesity issue with kids across the country. Yes. And one of the ways we've got that we can combat that is to get them active, get them playing sports, get them off get the them couch. Get them off devices. Get yes. them off the couch, yeah. get them off the streets and, yeah. and show them sports. But if there's nowhere for them to play, right. or if their parents have to drive 30 minutes or 45 minutes to a practice or league games, you know, they're, Youth sports has grown so much in the last 20 years, yeah. but there's a lot of kids that are getting left behind. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're trying to work with the city on is not only just this tourism kind of tournament ready facility, but also working with the parks department in the city to identify how do we invest in this infrastructure for our kids all over the city? Because we have a pretty big city. Yes. It's very broad. Yes. So how do we kind of give our kids, because again, 
85% of the kids in the Fort Worth ISD are free or reduced lunch. Yeah. So their parents can't afford maybe working a couple jobs or so on to afford the fees for, for, th for time. sports it's or in time the time. to get them around. 100%. Sure. Yeah. So if we yeah. can make sports more accessible, mm -hmm. and we're doing things with the Parks Department right now with an after school sports program yeah. to get to break down those barriers. If we can get more kids access to sport, get more kids playing sports, get them to learn the life lessons that sports can teach them about teamwork and perseverance and the, the, the payoff of hard work, all that stuff we can do together, we'll, we'll put the city in a great position. Yeah, and I think it just uh, gives all of those kids a different perspective, a different outlook, and maybe different opportunities they didn't have before. You talked a little bit about um, the, the partnership you do have with the, the Parks Department. You want to elaborate on that? Where, where, are, you, where are those um, sessions happening, that you, and what are you, what are you teaching? Well, so the after-school sports program is something that um, Dave is Lewis with the with centers. The, yes. Yeah. Well, the the concept is is to have kids stay after school, yes. and then they can participate in what we've done is eight weeks of soccer, eight weeks of basketball, and eight weeks of flag football. So one day a week they stay after school and they participate and they do a practice for their soccer, yeah. and then on the weekend they do like a jamboree style games with their parents at at Rolling Hills. So it's okay. a lot, you know, it's very accessible. It's close. We're in five schools right now. We had about 200 kids participate in this kind of pilot program that we're talking uh -huh. about right now. The Parks Department is, is really, you know, executing that with their staff and, and their resources. And our goal is to grow that program next year, get more schools, more kids. And again, it's just getting kids active, getting them introduced to a sport that maybe they never heard of or never had a chance to play before. And if we have one kid that, that wants to play basketball or gets that soccer bug right. and wants to continue on, there's opportunities for them to do that. But we just want to get kids active and work with getting our kids more access to sports. Well, I, I think that's wonderful. And one of the things we've talked about with this youth complex, sports complex uh, that, that we, that's been on the table and, and there should be more information forthcoming soon really is um, no matter where it's located in the city that there's accessibility. I don't know what that looks like, but you know, bringing kids over, getting them there so they can still use those facilities. And that's something I've been uh, also um, a big proponent of, of that right. no matter where it is located, because there's only so much land that we have here in the city to use, that we make sure that all parts of the city have access to it right. in, a, in a lot of different ways. You mentioned a little bit earlier some of the programming that we've had, but I think you did like you tracked like 75 events or something last right. year. Where, who were some of those organizations, and in your thought, why, what brought them to Fort Worth? Besides you, <laughs> well, it's, it's a team <laughs> of folks. <laughs> no, it's a team of folks, and we've got a fantastic team. Here. That's yeah. that's one of our strengths, both at the at Visit Fort Worth, the sports team, yeah. and then the city as a whole, because we, we rely on everybody, our our hotel partners, our hospitality partners as a whole. Uh, but we've had some fantastic events. We have the NCAA gymnastics championships for women's. That's here. We started it in 2019, and yeah. we're hosting all the way through 26. So that event's coming up in April. So we've got eight of the best. You know, women's gymnastics teams coming to Fort Worth wow. to compete for a national championship, yeah. and that's televised on I ABC. I went last year and saw Simone Biles before. It, was that? Yes, yeah, we've had yeah, the yeah. USA Gymnastics yes, and Simone yeah, Biles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, coming out of the pandemic, we had the National Finals Rodeo where we had all the yeah. ancillary events here. We had the Olympic team trials for USA Wrestling, which we put together in five weeks based off some COVID issues that they had at some of their other venue. Uh, so we've had a lot of great events in. We have the PBR. We've, we've got their world finals out of Vegas and into Fort Worth. Yeah, I, they really just loved where the city's going and the brands really aligned yeah. together and they're one of the biggest entertainment brands in the country so yeah. for us to be able what to partner all, what with happens them, in vegas doesn't always stay in vegas there you go i, I love yes. that line yes <laughs> so we're working with them to continue that great relationship uh, we've got um we just had the women's tennis association we had yeah. some of the best tennis players in the country in the world mm -hmm. here in fort worth at dickie's arena that really dickie's arena helped you know get that event so Rocket League World Finals, which yeah. is you know esports. Everybody talks about esports, but we've really hosted some of the biggest events. We just secured Halo's national championship for next year. Okay. So Halo is one of the biggest brands in esports, and we're going to host one of their championships. Yeah. Where is that being hosted? That'll be at the convention center, oh, okay. actually. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. a little bit different setup, but yeah. uh, another cool event. So, and we've also made a, a lot of ground up with our the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. Okay. So you know, four years ago, five years ago, when I got here, we didn't have a lot of relationships with those USOPCs, mm -hmm. but but coming out of COVID and in our investments with USA Wrestling and USA Table Tennis, we've got fantastic relationships with about 15 of them now from wow. table tennis to taekwondo to fencing. We just had 2,300 fencers, youth fencers yeah. from all over the country here at the convention center. Yeah. So would that be part of the Olympic trials then? They might host them here.
year as, as part the of that. The Olympics are coming up quickly in, yeah. in 24. So, wow. you know, that's next year. So yeah. they're already kind of getting ready to position. We're talking to USA Gymnastics about opportunities for next year as well. So a lot of great momentum on the USOPC front. Uh, and everybody, when they come here to Fort Worth, they just, they love our downtown. They love the stockyards. They love the hospi you know, hospitality that they mm -hmm. encourage here and that they feel. And, uh, you know, they want to come back. And that's that's a great thing. We're doing our jobs, all of us. All team effort. Team effort. Yes. Well, that, that's the name of sports for it the is. most part, right? Team it effort. Is. Well, um, if people want to get more information of what's coming up, where can they find you? Where can they get that information of all the things, all things sports that y'all y'all are involved in? Yeah, if they go to our, our website, fortworthsports.com, they can see all the different opportunities there to volunteer. We always need volunteers for events, okay. so that's one way to do it. And we've also got a youth program, a reading program that we're doing. It's called uh, Readers Become Leaders. We do it alongside the NCAA Gymnastics Championships. Okay. In the last four years, we've had that program where it's, it's a 10-week program. Kids read, they log their minutes, they compete against other schools. In the last four years, we've had 55,000 students read 29 million minutes. Wow. Four years. It's the biggest NCAA community outreach program in their history. This year, we had 81 schools participate, over 40,000 kids. That's that's pretty that's much 100% so you know, yeah. uh, usership from our schools. And right now, to this point, they've already read 38 million minutes. Wow. Just in five weeks. So that's another program for if anybody wants to get involved in that, you know, we'd love to have them too. So. Lots of opportunities. You don't just have to know how to throw a basket or shoot a basketball, right? No, you can do we could find there. a role. For, we'd have a lot of role players on our team. Great. Yes. Well, Jason, thanks so much. I appreciate all you're doing to um, highlight this other side of Fort Worth, another aspect that makes our city great. And, and I appreciate all the work that you're doing and we'll keep soldiering on with everything. No, we appreciate you as well. So I appreciate great, it. Great to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And now I'm here with Jasmine Henderson, who is a former professional soccer player and now is a motivational speaker and coach. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you very much for having me. Of course, of course. We just had Jason Sands on this, uh, in this previous segment and talked about youth sports and how important that is. And I think you started playing at a relatively young age. How old were you when you started playing soccer? Yeah, I was five years old and that was my first organized sport as well. So uh, got in very early. <laughs> got in very early. And then you played a lot of other sports, it sounds like, growing up. What Absolutely. Else did, what else did you play? Yeah, so we grew up in a household where sports were just a thing that you did. Okay. So I ended up playing any everything from softball to even bowling, yeah. basketball, uh, volleyball, soccer, and track, though, ended up being uh, what I played in high school. In high school. Mm -hmm. But at some point, soccer became your thing. Yes. And tell us a little about that, that journey and then playing professionally in Brazil. Absolutely. Well, it was very interesting for me, and I think it impacts a lot of the way that I coach nowadays because I like to tell everybody I'm kind of a recovering perfectionist. So if you tell me <laughs> something to do, I will do You'll it almost it to the okay. letter, yes. Okay. And so soccer was the one sport though where I just found a lot of personal freedom. Okay. It was one of the sports where it's very creative there's not really a playbook like you would have in American football or basketball. And so I just had to learn how to risk, make mistakes, get back up, you know, all the intangible things right. I think that are just really amazing for youth sports in general. And so um, and for I, kids to learn, right? Yeah, just absolutely. That you, that life is going to throw things, but you got to figure out how to get through. You got to figure it out. Yeah. And what I think is great too, especially when it comes to a team sport like that, is you learn how to become a follower. You learn how to become a leader. Mm -hmm. How to use your voice again, and how to just get back up and know, okay, if we didn't win this time, what could we do better the next time? Yeah. And I think that that's really what's helped me as I've shifted into you know the many lives that I've led. Mm -hmm. I think uh, throughout the years. But it just made me so passionate about soccer. And I think the way that I like to, to lead, I think really uh, involves all that, all that community, which was really found in soccer. So I, when I saw the, the 99 team, the USA team play, mm -hmm. you know, with Mia Hamm and yeah. Julie Foudy, that was so impactful for me. And I, I had this, this gumption and this, this instinct that I knew I wanted to make a difference and I thought maybe soccer could be the way that I could do it. But it wasn't really until I got invited um, to play internationally for a tournament, the biggest youth tournament uh, for soccer in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And I was 17 years I'm old wow. and my eyes were just completely opened. It, it's literally like a mini Olympics and you see country after country. I still get goosebumps right now <laughs> thinking about it just because you know everybody's in there. We're coming from all types of background. Yeah. 
and yet we're so playing diverse, one diversity, sport. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, and we speak that one same right. language. And I thought, wow, this soccer unites people. Mm -hmm. That soccer is just such an international language that I, I just knew from then I was like, okay, how do I do this? Right. <laughs> yeah. And get paid for it. And, and get paid for it. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so funny because I look back and in, um, I went to a college prep high school actually, and we had to do a research paper and they wouldn't let me do it on being a professional <laughs> soccer player, which was good in hindsight, you know, but um, well, it, you're it's already putting together a business plan. It already put, like. Yeah, <laughs> already putting it together. And I think, you know, it was just that that hope and optimism. Like my parents always um, created an environment where it was like it doesn't doesn't matter where you come from. It matters who you are yeah. and what goals you have and just to work hard for it. So I think I just went in guns blazing, just thinking nothing's going to stop me. I'm just going to figure it out. Figure it out. That's that's a big part yeah. of life. So you grew up in Los Angeles. I did. And then, so how did you make your way to Fort Worth, Texas? Well, you know, I never was like, yeah, I think I'm going to move to Fort Worth right. now. But <laughs> it was really, honestly, just how everything started lining up. Um, again, uh, LA is very international and to all the aspirations and where I was going with uh, the coaching and the playing that I was doing. Uh, LA at first uh, just seemed to be the right fit as things were kind of falling together. And then, you know, COVID happened mm -hmm. and I, it, I, LA had been changing for a long time. And even when I had my son and became a mom, I kind of was like, man, do I want to be in LA? You know, <laughs> my, my parents did a really great job of um, creating a very positive bubble for us. But we always kind of felt like a square peg in a round hole, to really? be honest, really? uh, just with some of our own just personal values and the way that we were raised. And um, but we are a lot of my family is actually still in L.A. Yeah. So you kind of stay where your family is. Yeah. And uh, both my sister and I were both single moms. And we just said, you know, I think it's it's time just for a new a adventure. Change, a change. Yeah, yeah, a new yeah. adventure, new change. Yeah. And uh, it was funny, though, because when I when we were choosing Fort Worth and not Dallas or yeah. something like that. I was trying to prepare my sister because she hadn't traveled as much as I had. And she goes, I said, yeah, you know, well, it's going to be a little bit, you know, slower pace. It's going to be, you know, a little bit of this, that. And she goes, well, what are we? I said, girl, we city. <laughs> I was like, we're real city. But I was like, I think it's going to be a great change of pace. And honestly, it didn't take anything but maybe a week that we were here where we were just like, we made the right made decision. The right yeah. Well, we're happy to have you here in Fort Worth. and. In, in welcoming and, and I'm glad you found a, a place for yourself. Tell us a, a, a day, what, what's a day like for you as a soccer coach, motivational speaker? What does that look like for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. So again, just being a mom, yeah. uh, priority definitely Priority son. number one, yeah. yeah How so, old is he? Uh, he's 10. Okay, yeah, great. So, Where does he go to school? Uh, that's what I was just about okay, to say. Yes. Part of my day yeah. is actually homeschool with okay. him, uh, great, um, great. which is really awesome because yes. it gives that flexibility. Uh, he was actually able to come with me to France okay. uh, to help set a world record as well. Oh, so wow. just really fun stuff yeah. to be able what to was incorporate the world record that. You set? Oh, it was uh, the biggest five aside okay. soccer game ever. So it was literally rolling subs for about four days. Okay. Uh, Explain that to our people. audience and yes. to me too. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so in a typical soccer game, uh -huh. you have 11 versus 11 okay 90 minutes that's yeah. it okay in this particular challenge it was five aside okay so five people on one side so it's a smaller game okay um, and so rolling subs meaning you could play for an hour or like me and all my other crazy ladies um, we actually played for eight hours eight we hours. played the longest stretch yeah wow. um, how long during did the game that time last total uh, total, that's what I'm saying, four Eight days. Hours, four, day, four days. Yeah, four wow. days. So, okay. especially because it was during the Women's World Cup, we okay. had like people from all over the world participate in this one world record. Again, just anybody, um, man, woman, boy, girl, who just wanted to support uh, elevating women in sports. Wow, oh, that's, that's yeah. amazing. That's so, amazing. So, yeah, so my day starts off, you know, homeschooling him, and then, which works perfectly because yeah. my sister and I tag team, and then I go off and I coach, and okay. it's really awesome because what I really am finding about, in particular in the Fort Worth area, too, is just really great families and players that are really encouraged with hard work, a great work ethic, a great attitude. So it's been really fun. So um, I'll go and maybe uh, I'll coach a class at the Game On facility, or maybe I'll be doing some technical training or coaching my own team uh, with the club, AFC, okay. or I'll be doing private lessons. And it's a really awesome way to be able 
in my style of coaching to be able to encourage not only the technical and tactical fundamentals, but then obviously all of the, that emotional and encouragement, that mindset support that I think a lot of players, especially now, uh, just really, really need. And they mm -hmm. kind of um, can get lost sometimes, either mentally or emotionally sometimes mm -hmm. in the game. And I think sports is such a great way to kind of build that backbone and to have experiences right. that make you kind of come up against yourself. And so it's just basically going one and zero versus you every day. Right, right. So it's great to be able to draw those parallels while I'm coaching. While coaching. And then um, so any of the motivational speaking stuff, sometimes uh, coaches will invite me out to speak to their teams mm -hmm. or sometimes it's just that one on one time where I'm, I spot it because I got it, right? And I can help walk a player through some of those either perfectionist or achiever tendencies. Well, it's interesting you um, are highlighting that a little bit because I think we've seen over the last number of years some high-profile athletes mm -hmm. that have um, maybe removed themselves, and, you know, because right. they realized self-care was their self-care was more important. And yeah. they, if you get into a situation, I would say we find that in every profession, right? But mm -hmm. you, you think about from a professional uh, sports uh, uh, aspect that um, it can even consume you even more, right? Absolutely. Because you are performing every single time someone looks at you. And yeah. so if you don't perform well, and we live in this world of win-lose. Yes. What, how does that? How do you? How do you work someone through those? Those. those Absolutely. Issues? Well, and that's that's again that's something that I think I coach a lot because I needed it a lot okay. as a player. Yeah. And so and soccer was one of those things where I mean you will fail. There's right. 90 minutes in a game. Right. You will we'll make say. a mistake. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of those times it's just. Um, helping them pinpoint whatever conversation is going on in their head, right? Because, and we all Sometimes know, like it's beating ourselves up. Exactly. That's the worst part, right? Especially if you're, if yeah. you're, and a lot of um, players that play sports, they have real high achiever personalities. Mm -hmm. Like I said, perfectionist tendencies, yeah. um, and unfortunately, sometimes their level of achievement is equated with their self-worth, right. right? Or with their self-confidence, especially yeah. for girls. And so, hmm. as I speak with them, I try to help them become aware of what conversation is happening in their head. Mm -hmm. So that way we can stop that track mm -hmm. and start replacing it with something new. Because like you said, um, unfortunately, I think even a lot of coaches can get very wrapped up in the achievement of achieving. Right. We've won this medal or we've won this many games. And sometimes that can be, you know, taking a toll on the player themselves and not really stopping. Eroding their self-esteem. Exactly, else, yeah. yeah. Self-esteem or uh, even just checking in on them mm -hmm. uh, with whatever it could be going on. Maybe sometimes it's their home life. Right. Uh, for me, a lot of players definitely play to escape at times. For me, it was never really to escape like a home life or, or the community. It was really just to escape myself, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> and the old, All those voices rattling exactly, around your head. Yes, exactly, yes, where yes. it was like the one time I could just be like, shh, and just kind of live yeah. in the moment. And, and allow myself, allow those strengths to really come through instead of focusing on the weaknesses. And I think a lot of times, even some of the women that I've spoken to who have also played yeah. nationally, professionally, or even collegiately to a high level, um, really just speaking to them about helping this next generation with vulnerability mm -hmm. and not equating that to weakness. Right. And to say, hey, like, I don't have to be strong all the time because that's literally impossible. Right. Um, I kind of liken to if I have an emotion that comes in, if it and if it feels messy, right? Like yeah. if it's whatever loneliness or um, uh, discouragement, anything like that. Instead of what I used to do is just kind of build up a wall, right. right? Well, that wave would keep coming. I just build high, yeah. build higher, because I'm not supposed to feel those things, right? right? Well, and then to your point is I think then we see all these high-profile athletes. They've built it up so much that then it just comes in like comes a tidal in, wave, yeah. crashes Crashing and down. wrecks everything and I think it would just be so much more just in a healthy situation I think for anybody really to really learn that emotion intelligence of hey I can feel this emotion don't let it sit there but I can let it I can let it come in and I can let it go back out yeah and I think if there was more of that I think that we would see not only healthier players but just healthy healthier society right. that can kind of balance both of yeah. those kind of feelings and emotions that are kind of acceptable and also the messy ones. Yeah, it's interesting, a, a couple of points at, at, the, at church yesterday, my pastor brought up 
and we talked about um, these that we are living we live in these peaks yeah that we think that we're always going to live in these peaks but there's also valleys and yeah. that's part of life and it it's is. sort of the idea of failure yeah failure is okay yes because you learn from those lessons and you take mm -hmm. them somewhere else uh, with you and you understand wait I'm not going to be perfect all the time. I'm yeah. not going to win all the time. Mm -hmm. And that leads to a, a lot of, I, as the father of three daughters, yeah. I want them to know you're not going to be perfect all the time. You're not going to look like you, the perfect yes. you know, example on TV. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. And it's yeah. absolutely okay. And if actually it, it is so imperative that you have failure to succeed, right? And right. I think a lot of, uh, what do they say, success doesn't look like this, it looks like this, right? It's a, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. Of, like you said, peaks and valleys. And I think something that I've definitely encouraged other players, and even in the many peaks that I've experienced, uh, you know, some people would ask, well, how did you get through that valley? Or how did you just not stop? And I think because of that training in athletics of experiencing those peaks and valleys, and I think that those valleys and even the peaks actually set you up for bigger, higher peaks. Yeah. And, and um, for you to endure even lower valleys mm -hmm. so that way, no matter what goes on in life, I've pivoted many times in my life. Yeah. And I think that that has a lot to do because of that, because of that mindset. And we'll learning never... resiliency, right? But yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So you do something, uh, you uh, very involved in gender equality. Yes. Let's talk about that for just a second. Absolutely. What, you, did you, you, Mount Kilimanjaro, you climbed? Yes. yes yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so funny because yeah. like I said, my, my highest aspiration was professional soccer, which is a great aspiration, mm -hmm. but I don't think I, I like the me now, and the me then, I don't think that the 10 year old me would have been like, yeah, we're gonna set world records. We're gonna right. climb mountains. Um, but it was just one of those things that just seemed like the next right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, my professional experience in the professional environment was not that professional. Mm -hmm. And I definitely just wanted it to be better for that next generation. Um, I have a son now and one day I'm hoping I have a girl, <laughs> okay? Um, but even with my mom, you know, my mom uh, also has a background of playing semi-pro softball over in Germany. Okay. And so I, I got to see that example of, um, you know, athletic femininity in my mom, but also got to hear some of the things that she went through, um, obviously had my own experiences. And so when that opportunity came around, I was just like, Wow, yeah. like I thought I was gonna be able to make things better by playing professional soccer, but being able to be a part of, I mean, climbing Kilimanjaro, I mean, we had 30 women from 20 plus different countries. Oh, amazing. And so for all of us to climb this mountain, especially no cell phones, yeah. so there's all these conversations that we're having and we're just realizing how many of our experiences were the same. Mm -hmm. And so it just really totally bonded different us. Totally different countries, totally, yeah, different, totally people. different countries. But we, I often say we have more in common than we do apart. Yes. You know, differences. Then so differences, we have to, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so I think, at least for me, I think what, what I really appreciated about the organization Equal Playing Field to help set, you know, organize uh, these world records was that it was never a men versus women issue. And I think that that's where kind of people kind of get in the tall weeds about issues. Mm -hmm. For me, equality is just, hey, you have just as many strengths yeah. to add to the table as I have strengths to right. add to the table. Right. And I think if we acknowledge that more, like you said, our similarities, our differences, but if we decided to like work together yeah, yeah. instead yeah. of pitting ourselves against each other, yeah. um, we could actually go a lot further. So when I got the call, and as long as that wasn't the case, <laughs> um, I was like, I am up for it, even though I was like, I'm an LA girl, I've never climbed a single mountain in my life, but let's do it. Yeah, your city, you're going out Super to the country. Super city. <laughs> I know, going out into the country yeah. and literally uh, just climbing and we basically played in the crater of Mount Kilimanjaro. So wow. it was like almost you played like a game. Yes. Out there? Okay. 90 yeah. minutes. Yes. Wow. 90 yeah. minutes yeah. full, full game. And I'm one of the players that played the full 90 game or full 90 minutes. Uh, FIFA rules had wow. official referees and official goals. I mean, it's incredible what they created up yeah. there. Um, and the was fact there that oxygen, do you have ox like, did, was there? Was yeah. Some, some so honestly, that? we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't know whether we were going to just be playing walking soccer. Uh -huh or even if we, how hard it was gonna be to make it through that 90 minutes. But I can say we were definitely running. Yeah. I think we just got a little sprinkle of fairy dust. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and but more of just the will of just knowing that we were all inching toward a common goal. Yeah. And so because of the extreme weather, we did have quarters yeah. instead of halves. They did provide oxygen. I took one like breath of it. Breath of yeah. that during the very first quarter, and I said, "Oh, that just threw me off. I couldn't do it." <laughs> it was such a rich um, wealth of oxygen yeah. that I was just like. I can't, I was like, I still have so many minutes to play. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it just, um, but it was really great though to obviously, like I said, for all of us working toward one goal together, yeah. even though we were playing, you know, of course, both teams, we definitely wanted to win. Right. The score was 0-0, but you could see that both of us, uh, we still were competitive, we wanted to win, but even more so when the game was over, the final whistle blew, we just knew that we created something Unique of, and, yeah, yeah just, of greater it, value yeah. and even I mean gosh that was back in 2017 yeah. but it's still something that I look look back at and I can say wow like and and I can still share stories and yeah. I can still um, encourage other women and there's been plenty of young girls that you know are like I want to set world records too or I want to climb too and yeah. I mean the truth is you know male female doesn't matter where there's everybody's climbing a mountain everybody's facing something, something that seems impossible right um and it could be a personal battle or it could be a literal mountain that you're climbing yeah. um but i just think that 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 visual and that metaphor of being able to climb a mountain together and to conquer the seemingly unconquerable right right uh and then play a little, little soccer when and you get play up there. some <laughs> soccer exactly and and then we all of us i think we still all summited after that oh, really? which was crazy yeah i wow. mean it's not that <laughs> Once you get that high, it's not it's that not much that further, to, go further. Uh, to go. But, you know, like I said, it's just an experience that I'll have with me forever. And yeah. not just the game, but really the bonds. You know, we all call each other mountain sisters. Right. And um, no matter what distance we're at, you know, we all go back to our separate countries and are doing our, you know, stuff to further uh, equality our, in our own sections, in our own um, communities. Right. And, and in our different ways, in our different gifts. But I think there's such a sisterhood of realizing you're not the only one. Right, you're everybody's not, climbing mm -hmm. this together. Exactly, That's you're right. not the only one uh, facing certain challenges, yeah. but you're also not the only one fighting for it either. Right, right. Well, oh my gosh, I could talk to you for another three <laughs> hours, I think. Yeah. But if I, I want you to leave a couple, of, a couple of tidbits of advice you've already given, sprinkled throughout this interview. If you're you know, talking to today, today's youth, Right. Thinking about sports, thinking about like next steps, thinking about yeah. you know, what their their life is going to look like. What would you tell them? I I would just encourage them to whatever whatever sport that they're playing. I think that that's super important to just not give up, mm -hmm. not give up in that sport to be able to take like you, like we were talking about those peaks and those valleys, mm -hmm. and for parents especially to know that. Yes, while attaining those high achievements by playing collegiate, collegially or professionally, that those can be very important goals, that those can be achievable goals. And I would also say that sport is just an important base that no matter who you are, it can really um, build those intangibles in your life. Because I know <laughs> there's some there's some crazy parents everywhere, <laughs> but I've definitely ran into some Texas parents and I said, okay, it's an, it's another level. And in a great way, because we yeah. all want the best for our kids. Right. But I think sometimes we miss all those intangible things yeah. that no matter whether they go on to play at a high level at their mm -hmm. sport or not, if we allow sport to do what it does best, which mm -hmm. is te teach us how to win, how to lose, how to make friends, how to lead, how to follow, right. all those different things. If we really can focus on, are you having fun? Are you giving 10 out of 10? Those are the things that they're gonna take with them forever. And that is gonna help our next generation um, just really lead. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited wonderful. to be in Texas yeah. because- We're excited to have you. I'm excited you know? to have you here in Fort Worth. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and I'm, I'm excited for, um, potentially all all of my international friends yeah. that can head this way and continue to, to make a difference around the world. That's awesome. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. You're good. Hey, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fort Worth Forward. It was fun getting out here to Game On Sports Complex on the west side. I hope you enjoyed all the interviews and learned as much as I did about all the great things happening with sports here in Fort Worth. This is what I'll say. Get out there grab a ball, whatever it takes, have some fun, and just enjoy, enjoy life. Let's go.
boom.